it's um, a film that we made, but it's also at the same time um, an announcement of a film that we want to make. So there's an idea of making a feature length film, but there's also this, what we show here, which is like a documentation of something as if it would already have happened. And uh, this is a musical battle between two music groups um, that are playing at the same time in the same place and trying to win this battle by playing the longest. So the ones that have most support by the audience, by the fans, they might go on until, you know, all night and then until 11 o'clock in the morning. But the others at 3 o'clock in the morning, they're dead and, you know, they, they, they can't do it anymore and they stop and so they lost. And it's referring, of course, to the famous boxing ma ma match in 1974, which is most famous under the title of the Rumble in the Jungle, between George Foreman and Mohamed Ali, Cassius Clay at this time, and um, filmed in Kinshasa, which um, has the most incredible music scene that I've seen on earth, and where music is very important, uh, both politically, uh, but also, you know, in terms of really like, a, like an identity thing. It really makes the person you are uh, in terms of which musicians you are able to follow. And the music is, for some strange reason, virtually unknown to Western ears. It's complicated, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's long songs that often change in rhythm and even structure, but um, it's absolutely uh, fantastic. The RB ride, as it's called, it's an old amusement park ride from 1969. In an amusement park situation, this would go up and it would turn very fast and you would be twisted around. But what is happening here is that um, the arm is fixed and you go up and you go down in a very slow fashion. So once you're sitting in one of these chairs that brings you up, you will be caught in this. And you're sitting there and you have to wait until the slow movement brings you down again so that you can step out. So in some ways it's almost like a trap for the visitors. At the same time it's quite grand, you know, to sit on top of it and look down and uh, be transported in a kind of, you know, meditative way, so to say, into uh, some higher spheres, <laughs> if you want to call it like this. I believe in something that maybe is not even uh, mentioned so often in this context um, because we think we can, you know, if, if, we, if we say political, we very often think about language. There's a connection between um, political attitudes or forms and a way of expression which is language or demonstration but is often based on the use of either the spoken or the written word. But what art can do, in my opinion, is to go in a different uh, field of, um, if you want to call it, maybe a proclamation, where the written and spoken word is not really valid any longer. It's more about something that cannot be said.